Uh, welcome everyone to the session, uh, how I reduced APM test execution time by 50 per by Chandra Mishra. We are glad they could join us today. Thank you. Thank you, Nidhi. So welcome everyone. My name is Chandan Mishra. I work as a lead SDED in Finexa. It's a, uh, it's a company in Indonesia dealing with FinTech loans and etc. So yeah, so this session is inspired from an activity which we did as a team in Finexa last year. So uh, two years back when I joined the Finexel, uh, we saw that we uh, we started with, there was no automation at that time. So we started making automation scripts slowly, slowly to become bigger around nine months after nine or 10 months. And then we started to see that the execution is time is reaching like four, four hours, five hours. So then it became a problem. And then in last July, 2020, we uh, tried to do some activity, did some research and how can we improve, where can we make uh, changes which can impact in the execution. So, uh, so I'm talking about that, what we did and how we can, we were able to reduce time more than 50%. So uh, before I start, this was a problem statement and then the framework which we are using, we were using at that time is Java uh, as a programming language, APM for APM or mobile app testing. Test engine to execute our test, uh, manage and execute our test, Gradle to for build dependency management and build execution, Jenkins to run our builds in CI CD mode. Uh, we had three types of uh, apps to deal with Android, iOS, and mobile web. Mobile web, because uh, our application Credivo has integration with multiple e commerce websites such as Tokopedia. So, there, uh, what happens when, whenever users clicks on some uh, some link where we have to pay through Credivo, a web, web page opens up and then they complete their transaction there using mobile web. So all these, all these things were done using APM itself. Uh, initially we started with local devices, but then, uh, when our test cases, test cases, uh, became so large and also due to the pandemic, we had to move towards the cloud device, uh, service provider called browser stack. So you we are using at that time, we were using five device plan. So at that time we had around 287 cases before we did this activity and total execution time was 240 minutes. And this is for like, there were around 40, 40 failures at that time. So, so basically around 240 cases were uh, getting passed and the other ones are getting failed. So this is the execution time for those. So I will be now talking about one by one, what are the activities we did. And then in those cases, I will be also taking which had made the maximum impact. And there are some changes which has not made much maximum impact, but good to have. So I think as an automation engineer, when you, when you go into the automation field, uh, this is the, the first beginner mistake we make. We make a lot of uh, use of XPath. Okay. Sometimes this is due to, uh, not knowing that IDs are faster. And sometimes in our case also, because of a lot of accessibility IDs and resource IDs are not present in the application, we had no other way. So we had to use XPath initially. But when, so it was fine till time, let's say we had 50 to 100 cases, but slowly, slowly we, we were seeing that like, uh, the test cases execution are taking a lot of time, especially for iOS. Android, it was still fine, but for iOS, the difference is huge. When you compare to an IO, uh, accessibility ID to an XPath. So for a normal dashboard element, uh, it was taking 48 milliseconds for XPath and for accessibility ID, it was taking only around 20 to 6. So there is a difference of around uh, 100%. Like there is a twice uh, difference, a 2x difference. So what we did for this, we worked with our developers and product manager. So it was like not a, not a thing which we can control. It was with the product managers and developers. So we worked with them. It took some time because, you know, developers and product managers has a lot of other things to do compared to helping out us. Uh, and as I said, the application was already old. So there are a lot of pages that does not have these kind of accessibility IDs. So it took some time, I think around two, three, two, three months. But after that, once all the IDs were there, we were able to see difference of around 10 minutes. As I said, this is not making much impact, but difference of around 10 minutes were visible. And of course, when there are more failures, you can see the difference being less and less, right? The second thing, and this is a favorite command for a lot of uh, beginners, uh, automation engineers, they, when they have no way and script is keep failing and they are not able to handle synchronization, 
they try to use thread of sleep, including us, but not in a way where we can say we are using it for X path, et cetera, because we already knew that how, how to use explicit ways. The problem was with data sync. Data sync means, let's say I perform because we have multiple uh, modules and multiple applications uh, interacting with each other, including our uh, microservices. So we had to wait for some amount of time for data sync. Let's say we created a loan on one side. We had to wait that the loan is available now in Lander DB. Okay. So it was taking more than like three to five minutes based on the consumer queue, what we have. So in these cases, DB validation, sometimes race condition also because we were running everything in parallel. So in those cases to handle those, we tried to use thread dot sleep. Let's say if we see that maximum time is five minutes, we try to use thread dot sleep for six minutes. It was fine. But then if we keep doing that, because later on we uh, started focusing on DB test and then we saw that we are keep using it. And then one day the test failed, like all the DB related tests failed because the consumer was not working. So it took around eight to nine hours to build to complete. And then that day we found out that, yeah, this is, the, this is where we had to like spend time. We, we cannot keep running our execution, uh, test execution using thread dot sleep. So what we did in this case is using availability, right? So uh, this is one example, availability dot, await dot at most five seconds until status is updated in DB. I customized that on top of that, I created some other additional, uh, additional changes. And then the final command would look like this. Retry, number of time I have to try out like 50 in this case with timeout interval. So I can keep uh, changing timeout interval. So let's say if I have to check every five seconds for cron job, et cetera, I can do that the timeout one until I have a code here, which I can run as a Lambda expression, <laughs> right? So I said that till that the data, data loan ID is present in database is not null. Okay. So till it is not null, it keep checking for 50 times every second. So rather than waiting for five, six seconds, we were able to do in 50 seconds. Yeah. It based upon the consumer time again, but rather than waiting for exactly 60 seconds or exactly 50 seconds or exactly five minutes. We can use retry now. So we don't have to wait for extra time. Let's say if we had thread dot sleep for five minutes, we are waiting for exactly five minutes. But with this, if we have received the data in one minute only, we are not wasting the other four minutes. So that has made a huge difference. That has made around 30 to 40 minutes of difference when we did this activity. Uh, using common explicit wait time, like a lot of automation engineers already know what is explicit wait time. I'm not here to talk about it. I'm talking about not having a constant or single explicit wait time. Okay. So as your application, you can see that in your application, there are pages and there are elements. So whenever you open a new page, which is dynamic and depends upon DB or API calls takes a time to load. And in that page, once one of the element is, which is the most important element is loaded. Others are very, very quick, quick to load. So don't have like uh, explicit wait of let's say one explicit rate of 30 seconds for all the elements. So what you can do, because the problem with this is let's say one, when your test cases are failing, it will check for all 30, all, all 30 seconds for all the elements, right? So you are waiting for, let's say if, if the page has five elements, you are waiting for 150 seconds in case of failure, everything is fine when everything is success. And in case of failure, you're waiting for 150 seconds, which which you can reduce if you are using multiple explicit way. So what you can say is that the elements which are most important and the first element to load on the page, you can have a long wait like 30 seconds for dot. By default for elements which are norm normally used in the application, you can have 15 seconds. Minimal elements are those elements, let's say you have, a, you have some logic in your application that when I select this drop down, this element appears. So for, because that that displays that displays the data based on the logic. It is already loaded in the backend, right? In the in the application, uh, but it displays based on the logic. So for those kind of thing, you can use minimal wait, like two second, one second, and then there are elements which, if you wait for thirty second, the first element, there are other uh, simple static elements like text views and etc. are loaded anyway. So you don't have to wait for them. So just apply a no wait at that time. So for example. See this page. So as you can see in this page, important elements are the, the request button. I have, I have uh, blurred out some of the elements, which were uh, like 
private. But see, the first is this request loan button is the most important thing. So I can wait for long, long wait for this item. Then other items like this and this, I can wait for a very minimal wait, right? Now there is a drop down here, right? Now in this case, sorry, in this case, I can wait for because this drop down, this value is actually depends upon this drop down. Okay. So for this particular thing, I can wait for only short wait or minimal wait, right? And then, then the other things like these 5, 10, 15 million is constant. So I don't have to wait for any, uh, wait for them anyway. Like this bar, slide bar is also constant. I don't have to wait for this text is also constant. So that's how you can distribute your tests. So when the tests are failing, it does not wait for everything, uh, 30, 30, 30, 30, like 30 into five or 30 into seven. It, uh, it depends upon like 30 plus five plus one plus one. So you are able to reduce your time. Let's say 150 to around 50 seconds with that approach. So with this way, we were saving around uh, again, 30 to 45 minutes in our execution. The fourth thing we did was using retry depends on and priority, especially retry and priority. Uh, why? Because again, flaky networks, user interfaces, handling race conditions, a lot of people in the initial part do use it. We were using it because our application was also not that stable at that time. But when they became stable, then we thought let, let's try to improve them. So what we did, the, the problem with priority is it is helpful for sequential execution, but with the priority, we will not get the parallelism. So if let's say your five tests are running in parallel, if you use priority for all of five of them, then they will run in sequence. So the, even though you have thread is equal to parallel, right? It will not work parallel. So try to have like a single test, single, set, uh, single method for single test and every test should test itself. It does not have any dependency to other, other tests. Now what I did with retry, I did something different. I cannot ignore it directly. Like, I cannot say I, I don't want to retry because let's face it, even, even you have like a lot of stable features and everything is stable, not a network is stable. You will see some failure, which are flaky failures, right? So what I did is for this, I made it dynamic based on my database. So what I was doing, I was storing the, all the test engine results in the uh, database, test result database. And from there, I selected those tests which in the last week I failing more than let's say three times or four times. You can customize that the count here. Okay. Now, once I got the list, I will pass this list to my retry method. And then there, so I can pass this is like this. So I can search this method in the list, right? If it is present in the list, then retry else no. So rather than retrying for, let's say 287 cases, I was retrying only for, let's say 15 or 20 cases, which are clicky compared to others. Okay. So this, this method is actually helped a lot. And we were able to, because this method is helped a lot when, when there is a failure, because let's say for eight hour build, we were able to save four hours because we were not trying everything, right? In case of success, it does not run anyway, right? So this retry customization helps us a lot when there are a lot of failures in the test. Fifth thing we did it with basically focusing on test cases count. What I mean by that, a lot of time, what we do is basically we try to map everything with test case management tool. Let's say in our case, we are, you are using test rails. So we are trying to match everything one by one. But the problem with that, uh, in test rail, there is no duplicacy, right? They write precondition, post condition, and everything has been written, right? Here, whatever we do, we are actually writing a duplicate code. Okay. That is, let's say, let's say a lot of time we, we have to go to one particular section. So in, in the test cases, we have to write that go login and then go a counter and then go to the loans. But in the automation test, let's say if I have five different tests, I will not do that. I will create a sim, uh, one method, which will be a before method or something. And then uh, I will be only changing the part where I have to perform different, different action. So in this way, we, we can't say that we can, we can make everything uh, like disappear. We have to choose carefully the which test to use. Okay. So in this way, I will say that the tests which are not API dependent, which are not DB dependent, or which are not dynamic static in nature, you can choose them. Okay. Also, they are not failing as quickly. Like you have the database of all the failure. You can find out which tests are stable enough, right? 
So based on that, you can make decision. And let's say for social media test, rather than testing that four different tests for Instagram, Twitter, so Facebook, and YouTube, you can just have one test, test social media website, go to Instagram, check that the Instagram web page is showing up, use back button to come back here, then Twitter, check Twitter, then again, come back here. So use back button so that you are not, you're not wasting your time initializing APM or coming on this page. So you're already here and APM session is already live. So you can make use of that because hey, these are uh, heads up for uh, this uh, five minutes uh, more to the session. These are your static tests. It's going a little faster now. Okay. Knowing everything from APM commands. So why we didn't make mistake because don't wanted any dependency on databases, API layer or network layer. But the problem with this is every APM command is costly. Okay. It takes a lot of execution time. So decide yourself that whenever there is a possibility, you, you need to test your UI only once. That's it. If you are able to test UI only once out of those 87 cases, you don't need it one to 86 cases. You just have to test once. And then for other things, you can use API calls, you can use shell scripts, you can use DB scripts, you can directly call connect with the Python console in the server and then run your scripts to test, uh, just like developers test uh, their unit tests, right? Not using in-memory caches, so I will explain with the example here. So let's say this is my page, okay? Here I have to verify, let's say one field status, order ID, city link, package, admin fee, subtotal, pay in 30 fee. Let's say there are 10 elements here, okay? If I'm making, 10 different commands, get text command to the APM server that will consume a lot of time compared to, let's say, if I have one command where I will say, uh, give, me, give me all the test cases or all the text views text. And then I can identify that the index one, I have this index two identity. I can map it to the hash map and then check my data uh, with the data, which I have in JSON or in hash map. Okay, in this way, you will not see much, but at least 15 or 20 minutes uh, time will be time uh, less time difference will be there using deep links. Okay, this is this is the biggest, uh, biggest uh, impact maker. So what you have without using deep link, sorry, <laughs> without using deep link. So let's say without using deep link, you go a test flow case for login and go dashboard and go to account tab, go to known section and then apply. Loan. But if you have deep links, then you can directly launch the app with the app link, uh, deep link, let's say app name slash loan apply, and you will directly go to that page. So you are saving around, let's say five to seven minutes, which you are consuming in login, go to dashboard and other stuff. So work with your developers, let them create a lot of tracking. Anyway, they do it for marketing. Just ask them that uh, some of them you can create for test automation team also. Then optimizing time of value for cloud vendor. We were using browser side as a tool earlier. So a browser side capability where you can close your test within a specified time. And also you can close your session. Session means let's say if APM is not doing something or ideal for let's say 60 seconds, you can just set it here. And then if you have your if somebody's writing script and it is taking more than 60 seconds, it will automatically close. And then you will take action why it is taking uh, more than 60 seconds, and then you can move your thread dot sleep to something like explicit weight or different, different, different uh, weight, weight type we used earlier. The second one, test timeout. So let's say a browser stack has by default two hours. You can set that any test which is taking more than 20 minutes, you will close that. Okay, using analytics to drive your test execution. Don't run every test every time in every build. Okay. Take decision based on the production analytics. See what are the uh, features which are used in production mode by customers. Let's say in our case, the customer would be using loans, billing accounts, dashboard, payment, and registration. The other other cases like FAQs, referral, social media were used less than one percent. So what we were doing, we were identifying the test cases, and based on that, we were running the most important one with every build, the the regression related one, or the the second important one with the nightly build. And these kind of either we are running weekly or either we are running bi-weekly. So after doing this, all this activity uh, for nearly same amount of failures, we saw that we the reduction was around 117 minutes or 127 minutes. Okay, and then now it's been one year now, and we are using the same practices. And then we can see that we have made 
around thrice number of cases now 800 the count is but time has not become so much time is still around around to 40 and 50 minutes these are the reference fm.io then there is a link for how to create app links then there is a link for different wait times and then there is a link for worst practices before doing the good practices you should know what are the worst practices so you can get to know about them from here okay i'm open to questions if you have any i will i'll just I'll just read out a few questions that uh, that are there. So yeah. one of the questions is using common framework for both iOS and Android. iOS execution is very slow compared to Android using hybrid apps. Any help on it? Yeah. So I will tell you that we are also planning. To, uh, we are migrating from uh, IPM to uh, XCUI driver. Okay. So oh sorry, native uh, native execution using XCUI driver using Swift. So if if you see a large difference, let's say uh, fifty percent or twice the difference between APM and the XCUI, right? Native XCUI, you should you should use next uh, XCUI built-in Swift code with your developers. So what we are doing, we are not doing everything there. We are uh, like again, we are using production metrics and testing out those features which are important in the uh, code itself, in the native Swift code itself. Okay, next. Yeah. Uh, while using deep links, uh, how can we handle app data in case of skipping login uh, of the app will not load the user data, right? Can we handle this in deep links? Yeah, in deep links, you can actually provide parameters. So let's say I can provide parameter like app token, okay, which actually locks in the user when he clicks on it. You see that all the marketing marketing campaigns actually use a deep links and you use it daily. How do they find out about their data? Right, so they you can you can append the parameters there, and then it will take action on that. Obviously, it is not be like something very uh, public. They will uh, they will use some kind of encryption mechanism there, so that you don't don't know what is this. But yeah, you can use that. Okay, one more last question. Will the DL links work on iOS? What what can you repeat that? Will the DL links work on iOS? Deep links. Yeah. Deep links. Yeah. Uh, so it is not straightforward like uh, like uh, Android, but there is a way. If, if, if you can contact with developers, they can create it. Okay. There is a way because in iOS, a lot of security is involved. So if you can get it, so you can definitely test with simulator. If you are within the code, you can test it very easily. Not straightforward like Android. Okay. Right. Uh, and uh, one is iOS chain not faster than accessibility ID. I will say that the difference is less, but accessibility ID and chain depends upon the depends upon the like what kind of element you have. Let's say if, if there is an ID on list, then chains are faster. Otherwise, uh, accessibility are mostly faster. Okay. Okay, we'll uh, we are a little over time, so we'll be ending the session here. Uh, thanks, Chandan, for sharing experience with us today.